The Chicago Sun Times is a daily newspaper published in Chicago, Illinois, United States. It is the flagship paper of the Sun Times Media Group, with the biggest circulation in Chicago and the ninth of the U.S. Topic: History. The Chicago Sun Times claims to be the oldest continuously published daily newspaper in the city. That claim is based on the 1844 founding of the Chicago Daily Journal, which was also the first newspaper to publish the rumor, now believed false, that a cow owned by Catherine O'Leary was responsible for the Chicago fire. The Evening Journal, whose West Side building at 17-19 S Canal was undamaged, gave the Chicago Tribune a temporary home until it could rebuild. Though the assets of the journal were sold to the Chicago Daily News in 1929, its last owner Samuel Emery Thomason also immediately launched the tabloid Chicago Daily Illustrated Times. The modern paper grew out of the 1948 merger of the Chicago Sun, founded December 4, 1941 by Marshall Field III, and the Chicago Daily Times, which had dropped the Illustrated from its title. The newspaper was owned by Field Enterprises, controlled by the Marshall Field family, which acquired the afternoon Chicago Daily News in 1959 and launched WFLD Television in 1966. When the Daily News ended its run in 1978, much of its staff, including Pulitzer Prize-winning columnist Mike Royko, were moved to the Sun Times. During the field period, the newspaper had a populist, progressive character that leaned democratic but was independent of the city's democratic establishment. Although the graphic style was urban tabloid, the paper was well regarded for journalistic quality and did not rely on sensational front page stories. It typically ran articles from the Washington Post, Los Angeles Times wire service. Topic. The 1940s, 1950s and 1960s Among the most prominent members of the newspaper's staff was cartoonist Jacob Burke, who was hired by the Chicago Times in 1938, won a Pulitzer Prize in 1941 and continued with the paper after it became the Sun Times, drawing nearly 10,000 cartoons over a 44-year career. The advice column, Ask Ann Landers debuted in 1943. Ann Landers was the pseudonym of staff writer Ruth Crowley, who answered readers' letters until 1955. Epi Lederer, sister of Dear Abby, columnist Abigail Van Buren, assumed the role thereafter as Ann Landers. Cups Column, written by Irv Kupsonet, also made its first appearance in 1943. Jack Olson joined the Sun Times as editor in chief in 1954, before moving on to Time and Sports Illustrated magazines and authoring true crime books. Hired as literary editor in 1955 was Hoke Norris, who also covered the civil rights movement for the Sun Times. Jerome Holtzman became a member of the Chicago Sun Sports Department after first being a copy boy for the Daily News in the 1940s. He and Edgar Munzel, another longtime sports writer for the paper, both would end up honored by the Baseball Hall of Fame. Famed for his World War II exploits, two-time Pulitzer Prize-winning cartoonist Bill Malden made the Sun Times his home base in 1962. The following year, Malden drew one of his most renowned illustrations, depicting a mourning statue of Abraham Lincoln after the November 1963 assassination of John F. Kennedy. Two years out of college, Roger Ebert became a staff writer in 1966, and a year later was named Sun Times as film critic. He continued in this role for the remainder of his life. Topic: The 1970s. In 1975, a new sports editor at the Sun Times, Louis Grizzard, spiked some columns written by sportswriter Lacey J. Banks and took away a column Banks had been writing, prompting Banks to tell a friend at the Chicago Defender that Grizzard was a racist. After the friend wrote a story about it, Grizzard fired Banks. With that, the editorial employees union intervened, a federal arbitrator ruled for Banks and 13 months later, he got his job back. A 25-part series on the Mirage Tavern, a saloon on Wells Street bought and operated by the Sun-Times in 1977, exposed a pattern of civic corruption and bribery, as city officials were investigated and photographed without their knowledge. 
The articles received considerable publicity and acclaim, but a nomination for the Pulitzer Prize met resistance from some who believed the Mirage series represented a form of entrapment. In March 1978, the venerable afternoon publication The Chicago Daily News, sister paper of The Sun Times, went out of business. The two newspapers shared the same ownership and office building. James F. Hoger, Jr., editor and publisher of the Daily News, assumed the same positions at the Sun-Times, which also retained a number of the Daily News's editorial personnel. The 1980s In 1980, the Sun-Times hired syndicated TV columnist Gary Deeb away from the rival Chicago Tribune. Deeb then left the Sun-Times in the spring of 1983 to try his hand at TV. He joined Chicago's WLS TV in September 1983. In July 1981, prominent Sun Times investigative reporter Pam Zekman, who had been part of a Pulitzer Prize winning team with the Chicago Tribune in 1976, announced she was leaving the Sun Times to join WBBM TV in Chicago in August 1981 as chief of its new investigative unit. Salary wasn't a factor, she told the Tribune. The station showed a commitment to investigative journalism. It was something I wanted to try. Pete Souza left the Sun Times in 1983 to become official White House photographer for President Ronald Reagan until his second term's end in 1989. Souza returned to that position to be the official photographer for President Barack Obama. Baseball writer Jerome Holtzman defected from the Sun Times to the Tribune in late 1981, while Mike Downey also left Sun Times Sports in September 1981 to be a columnist at the Detroit Free Press. In January 1984, noted Sun Times business reporter James Warren quit to join the rival Chicago Tribune. He became the Tribune's Washington bureau chief and later its managing editor for features. In 1984, Field Enterprises co-owners, half-brothers Marshall Field v. and Ted Field, sold the paper to Rupert Murdoch's News Corp., and the paper's style changed abruptly toward that of its sweet mate New York Post. Its front pages tended more to the sensational and its political stance shifted toward the conservative. This was in the era that the traditional Republican bulwark, the Chicago Tribune, was softening its positions, ending the city's clear division between the two newspapers' politics. This shift was made all but official when Mike Royko defected to the Tribune. Roger Ebert later reflected on the incident with disdain, stating in his blog, Murdoch sold the paper in 1986 to buy its former sister television station WFLD to launch the Fox Network for $145 million in cash in a leverage buyout to an investor group led by the paper's publisher, Robert E. Page, and the New York investment firm Adler & Shaken. In 1984, Roger Simon, who had been a Sun-Times columnist for a decade, quit to join the Baltimore Sun, where he worked until 19 1995. Simon quit the paper because of Murdoch's purchase of it. Beginning in October 1984, Simon's columns from Baltimore began appearing in the rival Chicago Tribune. In December 1986, the Sun Times hired high profile gossip columnist Michael Sneed away from the rival Chicago Tribune, where she had been co authoring the Tribune's own Inc. gossip column with Kathy O'Malley. On December 3, 1986, O'Malley led off the Tribune's Inc. column with the heading The Last to Know Department and writing Don't you just hate it when you write a gossip column and people think you know all the news about what's going on and your partner gets a new job and your column still has her name on it on the very same day that her new employer announces that she's going to work for him? Yeah, Inc. just hates it when that happens. In February 1987, the popular syndicated advice column Ask Ann Landers, commonly known as the Ann Landers column and written at that point by Epi Lederer, left the Sun Times after 31 years to jump to the rival Chicago Tribune, effective March 15, 1987. The move sparked a nationwide hunt for a new advice columnist for the Sun Times. After more than 12,000 responses from people aged 4 to 85, the paper ultimately hired two, Jeffrey Zaslow, then a 28-year-old Wall Street Journal reporter, and Diane Crowley, a 47-year-old lawyer, teacher and daughter of Ruth Crowley, who had been the original Ann Landers columnist from 1943 until 1955. 
Crowley left to return to the practice of law in 1993 and the paper decided not to renew Zaslow's contract in 2001. By the summer of 1988, Page and Adler and Shaken managing partner Leonard P. Shaken had developed a conflict, and in August 1988, Page resigned as publisher and president and sold his interest in the paper to his fellow investors. Topic the 1990s In mid-1991, veteran crime reporter Art Petak, who had won a Pulitzer Prize in 1974, left the paper. Almost ten years later, Dennis Britton, who had been the paper's editor at the time of Petak's retirement, told the Chicago Reader that Petak's departure, which was described at the time as a retirement, was involuntary. I had problems with some of the ways Art pursued his job, Britton told the reader. In September 1992, Bill Zwecker joined the Sun Times as a gossip columnist from the Troubled Learner newspaper's suburban weekly newspaper chain, where he had written the Vip People column. In September 1992, Sun Times sports clerk Peter Anding was arrested in the Sun Times newsroom and held without bond after confessing to using his position to set up sexual encounters for male high school athletes. Anding was charged with aggravated criminal sexual assault and possession of child pornography. In September 1993, Anding pleaded guilty to arranging and videotaping sexual encounters with several teenage boys and fondling others. He was sentenced to 40 years in prison. In 1993, the Sun Times fired photographer Bob Black without severance for dozens of unauthorized uses of the company's Federal Express account and outside photo lab, going back more than three years and costing the company more than $1,400. In February 1994, however, Black rejoined the paper's payroll after an arbitrator agreed with the paper's union that dismissal was too severe a penalty. At the same time, the arbitrator declined to award black back pay. In 1993, longtime Sun Times reporter Larry Weintraub retired after 35 years at the paper. Weintraub had been best known for his Weintraub's World column, in which he worked a job and wrote about the experience. Weintraub died in 2001 at age 69. In February 1994, the Adler and Shaken Investor Group sold the Sun Times to Hollinger Inc. for about $180 million. Hollinger was controlled, indirectly, by Canadian born businessman Conrad Black. After Black and his associate David Radler were indicted for skimming money from Hollinger International, through retaining non-compete payments from the sale of Hollinger newspapers, they were removed from the board, and Hollinger International was renamed the Sun Times Media Group. In 1994, noted reporter M.W. Newman retired from the Sun Times around the age of 77. Newman, who died of lung cancer in 2001, had been with the Sun Times since the Chicago Daily News closed in 1978 and had focused his efforts on urban reporting. Among other things, Newman had been known for coining the term Big John to describe the John Hancock Center and the expression Fortress Illini for the concrete structures and plazas at the University of Illinois at Chicago. On March 23, 1995, The Sun Times announced that beginning April 2, 1995, veteran Sports Illustrated writer Rick Talander would join the paper and write four columns a week. On March 24, 1995, The Sun Times published an editorial by Mark Hornung, then The Sun Times. Times editorial page editor, that plagiarized a Washington Post editorial that had appeared in that paper the day before. Hornung attributed the plagiarism to writer's block, deadline pressures and the demands of other duties. He resigned as editorial page editor, but remained with the paper, shifting to its business side and working first as director of distribution and then as vice president of circulation. In 2002, Hornung became president and publisher of Midwest Suburban Publishing, which was a company owned by then Sun Times parent company Hollinger International. In June 2004, Hollinger International placed Hornung on administrative leave just two weeks after Hollinger revealed that the paper's sales figures had been inflated for several years. Hornung resigned from the company four days later. On May 17, 1995, the Sun Times food section published a bogus letter from a reader named Olga Fokhyerself that Chicago Tribune columnist and former Sun Times columnist Mike Royko called an imaginative prank in a column. In that same column, Royko criticized the paper's food writer, who edited the reader's column at the time, Olivia Wu, for not following better quality control. The Wall Street Journal then criticized Royko with an article of its own, titled, Has a curmudgeon turned into a bully? 
Some now think so. Picking on a food writer. Although the Sun Times began hiring a freelancer to edit the space and look for double entendres, another one made it into the same column on July 26, 1995, when the section published a letter from a Phil McCracken. This one was a little more subtle. A reporter outside the food department told the Chicago Reader. In 1998, the Sun Times demoted longtime TV critic Lon Granker, shifting him to covering education. Granka, who died in 2006 at age 56 of Alzheimer's disease, remained with the paper until 2001, when he retired following an extended medical leave. Topic the 2000s In 2000, the Sun Times new editors, Michael Cook and John Cruikshank, tapped longtime staff reporter Mark Brown, who had considered himself an investigative reporter, to write a column that would anchor page two of the paper. In 2000, longtime investigative reporter Charles Nicodemus retired from the paper at age 69, he died in 2008 at age 77. In 2001, Sun Times investigative reporter Chuck Neubauer quit the paper to join the Los Angeles Times Washington Bureau. Neubauer and Brown had initiated the investigation into U.S. Rep. Dan Rostenkowski that uncovered a variety of misdeeds that ultimately had led to Rostenkowski's indictment, conviction, and imprisonment. In April 2001, Sun Times architecture critic Lee Bay quit to join the administration of then Chicago Mayor Richard M. Daly as Daly's deputy mayoral chief of staff, responsible for downtown planning, rewriting the city's zoning code, and affordable housing issues. In April 2001, longtime Sun Times horse racing writer Dave Feldman died at age 85 while still on the payroll. Role. In 2002, with Kuchmarski and Associates, the Chicago Sun Times co founded the Chicago Innovation Awards. In May 2002, Sun Times editors Joycelyn Winokur and Bill Addy, who were then husband and wife, both quit on the same day to join the rival Chicago Tribune. Winokur had been the Sun Times managing editor, and she left for a new post, associate managing editor for National News, while Addy, who had been the Sun Times sports editor for nine years, became the Tribune sports editor. News. In October 2003, famed Sun Times gossip columnist Irv Kupsonet began including the name of his longtime assistant of nearly 34 years, Stella Foster, as the co author of his column. After Kupsonet died the following month at age 91, the Sun Times kept Foster on and gave her the sole byline on the column, which became known as Stella's Column. Foster retired from the newspaper in 2012. In 2004, the Sun Times was censured by the Audit Bureau of Circulations for misrepresenting its circulation figures. In February 2004, longtime Sun Times political columnist Steve Neal died at his home in Hinsdale, Illinois, at age 54, of an apparent suicide. In August 2004, longtime Chicago broadcast journalist Carol Marin began writing regular columns in the Sun Times, mostly on political issues. In March 2005, the Chicago Tribune hired away television critic Phil Rosenthal to become its media columnist. He eventually was replaced as TV critic by Doug Elfman. On September 28, 2005, Sun Times columnist and editorial board member Neil Steinberg was arrested in his home in Northbrook, Illinois and charged with domestic battery and with interfering with the reporting of domestic battery. With that, Steinberg, who had been at the Sun Times since 1987, entered a treatment facility for alcohol abuse. On November 23, 2005, Cook County prosecutors dropped the charges against Steinberg after his wife said she no longer feared for her safety. On November 28, 2005, Steinberg returned to the Sun Times pages after going through a 28 day rehabilitation program at a nearby hospital, and he gave readers his version of the events that led to his arrest. I got drunk and slapped my wife during an argument. Steinberg also reported that he and his wife were on the mend, and that he was working toward sobriety. In the spring of 2006, a variety of longtime Sun Times writers and columnists took buyouts, including sports columnist Ron Rapoport, sports reporter. Joe Goddard, society and gardening columnist Mary Cameron Frey, book editor Henry Kizer, page designer Roy Moody and photographer Bob Black. Classical music critic Wynne Delacoma also took a buyout, and left the paper later. In August 2006, the Sun-Times fired longtime Chicago Cubs beat writer Mike Kiley. Then Sun Times sports editor Stu Courtney told the Tribune that the dismissal of Kylie, who had joined the Sun Times from the Tribune in 1996, was a personnel matter I can't comment on. 
the Tribune's Teddy Greenstein called Kylie a fierce competitor. In February 2007, noted Sun Times columnist Deborah Pickett quit upon returning from maternity leave. The reasons for her departure were differences with her editors over where her column appeared and the sorts of assignments being handed to her. On July 10, 2007, newly appointed editorial page editor Cheryl Reed announced, "We, the Chicago Sun Times editorial page, are returning to our liberal, working-class roots, a position that pits us squarely opposite the Chicago Tribune, that Republican George Bush, touting paper over on moneyed Michigan Avenue." In January 2008, the Sun-Times underwent two rounds of layoffs. In its first round, the Sun-Times fired editorial board members Michael Gillis, Michelle Stevens and Lloyd Sachs, along with Sunday editor Marcia Fralick and assistant managing editor Avis Weathersby. On February 4, 2008, editorial page editor Cheryl Reed resigned saying in a front-page Chicago Tribune story that she was "...deeply troubled." that the paper's presidential primary endorsements of Barack Obama and John McCain were subjected to «wholesale rewrites» by editorial board outsiders. Cyrus Friedheim, Jr., in his role as Sun-Times publisher, issued a statement reassuring staff that the endorsements didn't change and that the rewrites only «deepened and strengthened the messages». Later that month, the Sun-Times underwent more staff reductions, laying off columnist Esther Sepeda, religion reporter Susan Hogan, Albach, TV critic Doug Elfman and one-time editor Gary Steckles, while giving buyouts to assistant city editors Robert C. Herguth and Nancy Moffat, environmental reporter Jim Ritter, copy editors Chris Whitehead and Bob Mutter, editorial columnist Steve Huntley who remained with the paper as a freelance columnist, and special Barack Obama correspondent Jennifer Hunter. Also taking a buyout was longtime health and technology reporter Howard Walensky. Two other staffers, business editor Dan Miller and deputy Metro editor Phyllis Gilchrist, resigned. Reporter Kara Spack initially was reported to have been laid off, but she wound up staying with the paper. In August 2008, high-profile sports columnist Jay Mariotti resigned from the Sun Times after concluding that the future of sports journalism was online. In October 2008, the Sun Times gave buyouts to noted TV radio writer Robert Fader, now a blogger with Time Out Chicago, and longtime auto writer Dan Jedlicka. The paper also laid off two members of its editorial board, Teresa Puente and Deborah Douglas. In November 2008, the Sun Times dropped its quick takes. Column, which Sun Times columnist Zay N. Smith had written since 1995. Smith wrote the column from home, and the Sun Times discontinued the column and informed Smith that it needed him back in the newsroom as a general assignment reporter. The paper's union complained, noting that Smith had permanent physical disabilities that made it difficult for him to be mobile. Smith later left the paper. In March 2009, sports columnist Greg Couch left the Sun Times after 12 years to join AOL Sports. On March 31, 2009, the newspaper filed for bankruptcy protection. On October 9, 2009, the Sun Times unions agreed to concessions paving the way for Jim Tyree to buy the newspaper and its 50 suburban newspapers. Of the $25 million purchase price, $5 million was in cash, with the other $20 million to help pay off past debts. In November 2009, Sun Times sports editor Stu Courtney quit to join the rival Chicago Tribune's Chicago Breaking Sports website. In December 2009, the Sun Times hired sports columnist Rick Morrissey away from the rival Chicago Tribune. Topic: The 2010s. In April 2010, longtime Sun Times pop music critic Jim Derogatis resigned from the paper to join the faculty of Columbia College Chicago and to begin blogging at vocalo.org.in. June 2010, the Sun Times laid off a group of editorial employees, including longtime sports media columnist Jim O'Donnell and features writer Delia O'Hara. In October 2010, the Sun Times laid off longtime sports columnist Carol Slezak, who by that point had shifted to feature reporting. At the end of June 2010, longtime Sun Times sportswriter Len Zeme, who covered many sports but largely focused on golf, retired after 41 years at the paper. Sun Times Media Group chairman James C. Tyree died under sudden circumstances in March 2011. 
Jeremy Halbreek, chief executive, said that Tyrese will be greatly missed and that his death will make no changes in the media company's strategy. Also in March 2011, The Sun Times laid off six editorial reporters and writers high school sports reporter Steve Tucker, reporter Misha Davenport, general assignment reporter Cheryl Jackson, media and marketing columnist Louis Lazary, feature writer Celeste Busk, and sports writer John Jackson. In May 2011, The Sun Times laid off real estate writer Bill Cuniff, features reporter Jeff Johnson and gaming writer John Grokowski, along with graphic designer Char Searle. In June 2011, The Sun Times fired longtime TV critic Paige Weiser after she admitted to fabricating portions of a review of a Glee Live in concert performance. She admitted to attending much of the concert but leaving early to tend to her children. The paper eventually tapped longtime travel writer Laurie Rackle to replace Weiser as TV critic. The Sun Times announced in July 2011 that it would close its printing plant on Ashland Avenue in Chicago eliminating 400 printing jobs and would outsource the printing of the newspaper to the rival Chicago Tribune. The move was estimated to save $10 million a year. The Sun Times already had been distributed by the Tribune since 2007. In August 2011, the Sun Times laid off three more reporters and writers: sports writer Mike Mulligan, quick hits, sports columnist Elliot Harris, and photographer Keith Hale. In September 2011, the Sun Times fired longtime restaurant reviewer and freelancer Pat Bruno. In October 2011, the Sun Times discontinued the longtime comic strip Drabble, syndicated by Newspaper Enterprise Association, which the paper had run since the strip's inception in 1979. The comic strip was the victim of a reduced page size. At the end of May 2013, the publication's photography department was dissolved as part of a restructuring that involves the use of freelance photographers and non-photographer journalists to provide visual content. Under the terms of a settlement with the paper's union, the Sun Times reinstated four of those photographers as multimedia journalists in March 2014: Rich Chapman, Brian Jackson, Al Podgorski, and Michael Schmidt. In March 2014, pop culture reporter Dave Hoekstra left the Sun Times in a buyout after 29 years with the paper. Concurrent with Hoekstra's departure, the company also laid off two Sun Times editorial assistants, two editors at the Southtown Star, a community editor at the Post Tribune of Northwest Indiana, and a weekend editor, designer at the company's West Suburban newspaper group. In March 2016, Shia Capos signed on to bring her Taking Names column to the Sun Times. She had been writing the gossip column since 2007 for Crane's Business. On July 13, 2017, it was reported that a consortium consisting of private investors and the Chicago Federation of Labor led by businessman and former Chicago alderman Edwin Eisendrath through his company Saint Acquisition Holdings, had acquired the paper and its parent company, Sun-Times Media Group, from then-owner Rapports, beating out Chicago-based publishing company Tronk for ownership. Topic. Awards and notable stories Journalists at the Sun-Times have won eight Pulitzer Prizes 1970, Tom Fitzpatrick, General Reporting 1971, Jack Dykinger, Feature Photography 1973, Ron Powers, Criticism 1974, Art Petak, Hugh Huff, General Reporting 1975, Roger Ebert, Criticism 1982, John H. White, Feature Photography 1989, Jack Higgins, Editorial Cartooning 2011, Frank Main, Mark Conkel and John J. Kim, Local Reporting Doug Moench was nominated for a Chicago Newspaper Guild Award in 1972 for his Stream of Consciousness story on violence in the Chicago subway system. In 1978, the newspaper conducted the Mirage Tavern investigation, in which undercover reporters operated a bar and caught city officials taking bribes on camera. In January 2004, after a six month investigation written by Tim Novak and Steve Warmbier, the paper broke the story of the hired truck program scandal. After a Sun Times article by Michael Sneed erroneously identified the perpetrator of the April 16, 2007 Virginia Tech massacre as an unnamed Chinese national, the People's Republic of China criticized the Chicago Sun Times for publishing what it called irresponsible reports. The newspaper later silently withdrew the story without making any apologies or excuses. Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Staff. The Sun Times' best-known writer was film critic Roger Ebert, who died in April 2013. Chicago columnist Mike Royko, previously of the defunct Chicago Daily News, came to the paper in 1978 but left for the Chicago Tribune in 1984 when the Sun Times was purchased by Rupert Murdoch's News Corp. Irv Kupsonet's daily column was a fixture from 1943 until his death in 2003. It was also the home base of famed cartoonist Bill Malden from 1962 to 91, as well as advice columnist Ann Landers and the Washington veteran Robert Novak for many years. Lisa Myers, the senior investigative correspondent for NBC News, was the publication's Washington correspondent from 1977 to 1979. Author Charles Dickinson worked as a copy editor for the publication from 1983 to 1989. The newspaper gave a start in journalism to columnist Bob Green, while other notable writers such as Mary Mitchell, Richard Roper, Gary Houston, Michael Sneed, Mark Brown, Neil Steinberg, sportswriters Rick Talander and Rick Morrissey, theater critic Hedy Weiss, Carol Marin, Pulitzer Prize-winning reporters Frank Main and Mark Conkle, and technology expert Andy Anatko have written for The Sun Times. As of October 2013, Lynn Sweet is the Washington bureau chief and Pulitzer Prize winner Jack Higgins is the publication's editorial cartoonist. John Cruikshank became the publisher in 2003 after David Radler, and on September 19, 2007, announced he was resigning to head the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation's news division. On May 30, 2013, The Sun Times laid off the vast majority of its photography staff as part of a change in its structure, opting instead to utilize photos and video shots by reporters, as well as content from freelancers, instead. Two staff photographers remained after the restructure, Rich Hine was named photo editor and Jessica Kosielniak, who was hired in January 2013, became the newspaper's only multimedia reporter. Among those photographers who were laid off was Pulitzer Prize-winning photographer John White. In an official statement, the newspaper explained, The Sun Times business is changing rapidly and our audiences are consistently seeking more video content with their news. We have made great progress in meeting this demand and are focused on bolstering our reporting capabilities with video and other multimedia elements. <laughs> Early edition The paper was featured in the CBS show Early Edition, where the lead character mysteriously receives each Chicago Sun-Times newspaper the day before it is actually published. <laughs> Gallery <laughs>